um, just a few days, just well, about a week ago. Uh, back in August of 17, 2021, Nissan released the final iteration of its production 2023 Nissan Z. I, for one, couldn't be more excited because holy shit, have I been waiting a long time for this. I actually thought that the new Nissan Z would never happen considering the position Nissan was in and since, you know, all that drama with Carlos Ghosn going on. But, but who knew? They're bringing it back, it's, it's cool. And uh, today I wanted to talk about a few things that I like about the Z and then a couple of things that I don't really like about it. I mean, who other than to talk about those things than that random Asian dude that's had his for 14 years. I, I remember there was this campaign that Nissan had. It was basically the 370Z on a trailer starting from the West Coast, ending up in the East Coast. Uh, the last stop was actually here in Miami, Florida. And that was their online event that they had, kind of like what they just had for the new Z. And I couldn't help but think about like how seven was like the magic number. If the 350Z came out in 2002 and then stayed in production until 2009, I figured if seven was the magic number, 370Z coming out in 09, we'd probably expect a new Z somewhere around the year of 2016 which not even close I was that guy that would keep refreshing the page in hopes of some sort of announcement from Nissan that we'd get like that, that Nissan would throw us some sort of a bone we've been waiting such a long time for this car to come out we weren't sure that they were actually gonna make another car after the 370 especially since the sales were pretty uh pretty not good to put it lightly it sucked because the 370Z towards the end, like the coolest version that they ever made other than the Nismo ended up being that weird 50th anniversary model. But again, I digest, the wait is no more. And nearly a year after the prototype came out, Nissan released the full production version of its car that should come out next spring as a 2023 model. So let's start off with the design elements. This one's a no brainer. Nissan executed such a modern and simple design with a few clear elements that were inspired by the original 240Z. Basically all they were doing was rendering the shape of the S30 and trying to put it in a more modern version of a car, which they executed pretty good. It kind of makes sense though that they made the rear taillights look like a Z32 since that was technically the last Z car that had twin turbos from the factory. I don't know if the correlation had to do with that, with those two, but if it does, that's a cool throwback. I thought after Infiniti released that twin turbo on the Q50 and the Q60 that Nissan would eventually throw the z bone and give it a twin turbo version. But that would be weird because 370Z is 3.7 and the new VR30 was a 3.0 liter. They couldn't reverse the number back down to 300 and call it the 300Z. It wouldn't be a good marketing strategy. And of course, on to the next thing that I do like about the new Z, which I'm sure a lot of people like about the new Z, is the fact that it comes factory with a twin turbo V6. Normally, Nissan had multiple different trims and would have a separation of tiers of the type of car you had. See, back in the olden days, Nissan gave you two options with the 300ZX. You had the option for the NA V6 and then the turbo V6. Mysteriously though, in 2003 when the 350Z came out, that was not an option. As a matter of fact, they used V6s across the board until the very end of the 370Z. My only guess is that Nissan did this to make up for the fact that they haven't made a turbo Z in like two decades or so. The Z's new 3 liter is basically the same engine you find in Infiniti's Red Sport 400 models. It's going to be a little tweaked, plus you get the option for the 6-speed manual transmission, which by the way is uh, bringing back the external slave cylinder which is a pretty big thing with Z guys, because if a little $5, $10 slave cylinder would break on your Z, you would actually have to pull the transmission out to get to it because it was normally internal. That was like the biggest complaint for a lot of Z owners over the years. Well, for this version of the car, it's back to being external, so you can just go underneath the car and switch it out in like five, 10 minutes. No more having to pull the transmission out of the car and replace like a $10 part. So the eighth generation Z comes only twin turbo. I got the Z back in 2007. Um, just this past July marks 14 years of the thing. And I can tell you the shit that I've seen throughout the years, you know, the quest for power and all that stuff. It was very comical because, you know, you take like an S2000 or a 350Z, you dump $4,000 worth of mods into it and you yield like six to seven horsepower. If you're lucky, maybe 10. Whereas, you know, you have your buddies in the Camaro, the Corvettes, whatever. Uh, they put a cam in the car and they gain like nearly 100 and horsepower. They put a cold air intake on the car and they gain somehow 50 horsepower. Put a cold air intake on a 350Z and tune it. You wanna see how much power you're gonna make? Like, I've seen people put stickers on their car that yielded more power than that. And honestly, you know, this is probably what defeated the sales of the 370Z. The 5.0 is a fantastic platform, little factory turbocharged BMWs. You know, the quest for power is always there regardless if, you know, you're used to the stock power or not. 
See, unfortunately, the 370Z suffered from the same problems as the 350. You could do a lot of good mods with that car, don't get me wrong, but the only way you could really get up to the top was with forced induction. I'm generally excited for this. I'm happy at the fact that the Z can finally get more than six horsepower from a downpipe and a tune. The next thing I definitely like about the new Z involved the cluster. Um, if you guys remember back in the 80s, the Z31 actually had one of the more futuristic looking gauges for like a car of its time. I mean, if you think about it, throughout the entire Z history, I feel like that car had the futuristic gauge out of, or the futuristic gauge look out of all of them. Um, digital gauge and like the tachometer kind of looked like a dyno graph. It was, it was kind of wild. So the new cluster is replaced. There's no more analog needles and numbers and stuff. The whole thing is a screen. It's digital, which I'm assuming is going to be very, very configurable, especially considering the fact that this is a sports car and a lot of people will be doing very spirited racing type of activities with this thing. All right, so the driver dash screen is going to be pretty cool. That's a given. I'm traditional. I'm, um, see, I'm, I'm more excited about the analog parts of the car, and that's that's the three little gauges that you get in the middle of the, of the dashboard. That's been pretty much a staple in every Z car except the Z32. See, in the 350, I actually had one pretty useful pod which told you a plethora of information. Instead of giving you a multifunctional display pod, they, they gave you a clock. <laughs> so if you had the GPS version, that also had a clock too. So you had two clocks. <laughs> kind of a dumb thing, I don't know. In the new Z you get three gauges again. Classic voltmeter just like the 350 and the 370. Uh, the middle gauge you get a pretty cool little nifty quirky gauge which is turbo speed. If, you want to see something spin all the way to 25,000 RPM, that's your chance to see so because you're never going to see an engine tachometer say that. And of course, everyone's favorite would be the first gauge. Nothing digital here. It's a uh, completely analog boost gauge, which I think and believe it reads up to, to pounds instead of bar. If I'm not mistaken, I know the Infinities have a factory like max of like 7 PSI. So I'm assuming that's probably going to be what the Z is going to come out at. You know, that center gauge is very, very gimmicky, but like uh, the, the, <laughs> the inner ricer in me is very excited to watch that thing spin. <laughs> uh, so last thing before I wrap it up, here are a couple of honorable mentions about the new Z that I definitely do like. Uh, one is the fact that it comes with the mechanical rear end. Back with the Z33 and the Z34, they were VLSDs. You know, the VLSDs weren't that bad, but the fact was if you were actually heavily tracking with those units, um, over time, those cars ended up behaving more and more like an open diff in the end. The new Z, however, comes with a full mechanical rear end, kind of like what you'd find in a Miata. So that's definitely gonna be a performance enhancer for this car, especially if you're someone who likes to take your car on the track. It's a good feature. And the last thing I definitely like about the Z is the fact that the new nomenclature involves absolutely no numbering whatsoever. Back in the olden times, all the Z names had something to do with the displacement or the engine size of the car. 280Z at 2.8, 300ZX at 3.0, and so on and so forth. The new Z has a 3 liter engine, so they couldn't go back down to 300 because that would just be really weird for Nissan's marketing. They can't go 350, then 370, and then, you know, back down to 300. It just wouldn't look right. So Nissan decided the bold attempt to just call the car the Nissan Z. See, what would have been cool is if Nissan used the VR38 from the outgoing R35 and put it in the new Z and called it the 380Z. Then we could have a six-speed manual transmission rear-wheel drive VR38 car. And they could have, you know, continued the 350, 370, 380 progression of increasing the displacement numbers of the name of the Z car. But instead, they're using the engine from the car that everyone's crashing on Instagram. I'm just excited the new Z's coming, right? All right, so I talked about the things that I liked about the car. Now, here are the things that I don't really like so much about the car, but who knows? Things grow on me. I hated the 370Z when it first came out. I ended up really liking the car after that. Number one, that katana thing on the side of the car. It's a big silver trim, and the only thing that that's screaming to me is, please black me out. Like I look at this big silver trim and I don't see anything else that has a silver trim and seriously I can definitely see that being one of the first mods because I mean look at this if you just color that in look how much more subtle that looks I know the whole two-tone roof thing is a fad unfortunately it didn't catch on with me I definitely like one solid ass color Next up rear taillight design the rear taillight design is supposed to pay homage to the Z32 I feel like the design looks too much like the Z32. I feel like if it was just like an outline surrounding the taillights, I feel like that would have been a much cleaner look. And lastly, the other thing that I don't really like about the new Z are those exhaust tips. 
Those exhaust tips remind me of, I don't know what era you guys grew up in, but so Street Glow is a company, they made light up stuff, you know, light up neon kits. One of the weirdest things they sold along with light up tire caps were LED exhaust tips. You know, they were just regular exhaust tips with little holes for LED lights in them and they lit up when you turned them on. And I, I think it was supposed to make the assumption that whatever came out of the back of your car would, you know, be that color, like, I don't know, green flames or red flames or blue smoke. A majority, like 99.7% of the cars that had those things couldn't spit flames or smoke or, I mean, if they were smoking, it was because they probably had like an engine problem. But, you know, performance wise, they didn't really do anything. They looked not cool. See, like right off the bat, one of the first mods that I'd do if I got this car would, you know, change the exhaust, you know, cat back or something, change the sound a little bit. I'd probably go with like a rolled tip design with like that, the, the thicker rolled steel tips with like the blue burnt edges. I don't know, I kind of like, well, I like the blue burnt edges on exhaust tips. I have that on the Z right now, except my exhaust tips are cut. I think a, a rolled tip would definitely look really good with this car. But let me know what you guys think about the new Z in the comments below. Do you guys like it? Do you not like it? I know like on the forums, on like both Facebook and Reddit, there seems to be a really dividing side between, you know, two parts of the coin. You know, you got the folks that really do like the car. They think it's definitely part of a good successor to the Z Heritage line. And then you have the other folks which just think it's a recycled 370Z borrowing stuff from Infinity's old spare parts bin. So that about wraps it up for my quick thoughts on the new Nissan Z. Hey Siri, how many days until spring 2022? It's 88 days until then. All right, so we got 88 days until spring. All right, before I wrap this up, here are a couple. Of, here are a couple. Like a what? I don't even know what a couple is. It's probably when these cars are expected to roll off the assembly line in Japan, not Germany or Austria. Japan. You no, know, Japan's fantastic. Whereas some people think it's just a really tired Infinity phone, dude. Who uses a landline these days, man? It's probably Publisher's Clearinghouse. I probably won like a million dollars and I have no idea. All right, take 37.